Hey everyone, have you been thinking Keylab Mark II? Those faders, like can you use them with Pro Tools? Will it work? Will it fit into what I do in terms of how I write music, how I record, how I mix? I've been giving it a go, have a look at it and see how it fits into my workflow. Pro Tools did release the uh, folders functionality. I wondered if that would maybe help me because I'm consolidating down much more into folders that I could maybe control. So I'm gonna give that a go. Then I'm gonna look at multiple tracks, you know, big bunch of track count. Can I move from bank to bank? And then thirdly, maybe writing some automation. Yeah, that might be worth a go. Anyway, let's go see. So here you can see a Pro Tools session that I prepared earlier. So I've gone through setting up the Alteria Keylab Mark II um, MIDI control as per my previous video. So here I've got folders, it contains uh, a number of tracks, and those tracks, and I've got this as rooted folders. So within rooted folders, they're then routing through to the main top folder, each of these particular ones here. Uh, are rooted through. So within this session, well, what I've uh, what I've got is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and my main bus here is on eight, and then I've got a print here which I'll be recording to. So in this example, what I'm going to do is put a loop on, move all the faders to zero, and then I'm going to move each of the faders up just to show you uh, what it's like working with the faders in trying to get a bit of a rough mix together. So firstly, let's play the track. So with the track playing, what I'll now do is move all the faders down to zero. So there you can see, apart from the print track, all of the tracks there are now at zero. So what I can down do is lift a number of those faders to the corresponding level that I'm looking for. So we start off with the drum loops. Now I'll bring in the bass. So just when I go to that level, I now bring in the vocals, which is on, let's see here, if I push the buttons, I can tell. So that's on number six. So it's always useful, you can click the button to see which fader. And let's bring up that vocal sample. And then I'll just bring up the effects, which is next to it. And then onto the background synth here. So if you're just working with a limited set of tracks, for example, if you're using folders, the new functionality within Pro Tools, I know not new to a number of doors, but new to Pro Tools, then that's quite useful in terms of what you see is what you get. You operate the faders for the tracks that you have. You can see which track that you're operating by pushing the button, and then you can operate the fader. Now let's have a look at a session which has got a number of different tracks in it and see how we can work with the banks function on the key lab to select various banks and tracks as we go. So within this session, you can see I've got a number of different uh, tracks. And so let's just press play. And you can see the session playing there. So what I'm now going to do is just explain how the banks work and how you can select a specific track. So if you can see down here, what's highlighted is this machine track and it's in white here. But also what you'll notice is a little blue outline along here on the first eight tracks. And that's actually the bank being selected. So if I now go across to the key lab and what you'll see with bank highlighted here, I can then select the next and previous banks. So if I go to next bank, you'll see that the blue outline moves across eight tracks. If I do that again, 
and go back, you can see that it's gone back to the first eight tracks. Now if I go next, and then next again, you can see I go on to the last set of tracks. But the highlighting here has not moved. If I now want to select this first one on this bank here, I can select it from the button here on the key lab. If I select that, it selects the first one, and then I can work my way along each of those tracks to know which one I've selected. So let's just go back to the previous one. And then this previous one, let me select number one, which is the bass. And let's just press play. And then the bass, I can actually move the volume. So there you can see there's a good way of moving along the banks and because it highlights with the blue you can see exactly where you are and if you use the button on the key lab to select as you go you can see very easily where you are. We just go and select previous and then track one. So track one, two and three here for me is unused but then I can go straight to the kick track with the buttons. So that seems to work quite well. Now let's have a look at recording some volume MIDI automation using the Alterior Keylab fader. So within this session, I've got a snare that I'd like to automate the volume of. So let me just play that for a second. So this is the one that I want to just write some volume automation rather than just uh, clicking here and adding it in. I can see if I can write some automation via the fader on the controller. So to do that, what I'm going to do to make it easier on myself is I'm going to reduce the speed of the track. So I've got the tempo down to 30 beats per minute here. And I'll start some time before. Now the first thing I have to do is check that I've selected the right track and got the right fader of course. What is good is what you'll see here is that um, this is the same track that I was using earlier which had the folders in but now that I've opened this folder up uh, you can see each of the tracks underneath and what I need to now do is select from the drum loops one of these tracks. So if I now go over to the Alteria and click from number one which is the drum loops as highlighted here and two goes to the machine beat it actually goes to the tracks underneath that folder which I think is quite neat. So then I can go to the auxiliary and then I can go to the snare one. So now I know this uh, fourth fader is the snare that I want to automate. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to set the fader to maybe minus 12. So let's just go from about here and then what I'm going to do is lift the volume to maybe plus 3. And then I'll press play. So let's have a listen to that. I'll just change the tempo, 127, and let's see what that's like. So that's written the automation for me fairly quickly. Well that's my overview of using Ulterior Keylab Mark II with Pro Tools, specifically with the faders done. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please click like. If you'd like to get other videos from me, do click subscribe. But until the next time, see you again. Yeah.